Carolina won the toss and they will receive. What a phenomenal scene down here, Tess. Sold out williams Bryce Stadium, over 80,000. And you can feel the energy in the stadium. They know they've got something special here. They know they have a great opportunity, and they're ready to take advantage of it. That's Farrell Cooper, true freshman return man for the game Cox as Austin Harden will kick away for Florida. And here is Cooper from the goal line. And as he spins out to about the 22-yard line. The senior quarterback, Connor Shaw, going for 24th win of his career. And that would tie the school record. Todd Ellis had 24 wins for South Carolina. Shaw has never lost here at home, 14-0. And Tess, if he's shown anything the last few weeks, it's his toughness. And it's a toughness that this team feeds off of. They've gotten better with him, with his toughness. Quickly gets it out to Bruce Ellington, and Ellington slips down, lost a little traction there at the 25-yard line. Of course, Mike Davis in the backfield with Connor Shaw. He's the leading rusher in the SEC, 11th in the country, 117 yards per game. Got himself a little chip on the shoulder for this one, Tess. Yep. He was saw a commitment him. to Florida. Yeah, and I saw him before the game, and he's he's ready to roll. I mean, he was he was zeroed in. Well, that's where he's spending his college days. I mean, the recruiting process took a left turn on him. Second and eight. And Shaw tries to get free, but is only able to gain about a yard that time as Neron Ball tracked him down. That's the one thing this Florida defense has to be able to do tonight is they've got to keep Connor Shaw in the pocket. He is really dangerous when he gets outside and can improvise, and they're well aware of it. So they went back and they watched a lot of Johnny Manziel tape, what they did with him, and they said if they and they did a good job of keeping him inside. They need to keep him in the pocket so they can track him. 37 now. Shaw, wide open and complete to Bird. And a big gainer for South Carolina. This is a favorite of Steve Spurrier when he sees zone. First, you're going to see a lot of great protection. And that, that pattern takes a long time to be able to develop. See how much time he has, and because of that, it's a crossing route. Bird's coming from the other side of the field to that vacated spot in the zone. 39-yard reception by Demir Bird. Shaw downfield. As we welcome those of you just joining us, Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Maria Taylor, here at a sold-out williams Bryce Stadium in Columbia, South Carolina. As number 10 South Carolina trying to stay alive in the race for the SEC East title. They have the tiebreaker over Missouri after that thriller a couple weeks ago. And we'll see what happens with Georgia. If they can keep alive for a trip to Atlanta. Florida, of course, comes in limping with all the injuries and having lost four straight but head coach Will Muschamp said it was a spirited week of practice and expects a good outing from his defense here's second and ten Shaw finds Mike Davis out of the backfield and they pursue him at about the 29 yard line as of right now those SEC East standings Missouri one of the great surprise stories of college football they control their destiny, but still tough games to come with Mizzou, with Ole Miss and Texas A&M and Georgia in a thriller with Auburn. South Carolina could use a Georgia loss and then play out that tiebreaker with Mizzou if they can get past Will Muschamp's Gator squad here tonight. Final SEC game of the season for South Carolina here at home. Third and four. And Davis... SEC's leading rusher, 
start the night in style. Yes, there's that chick we're talking about. He is running with some nice recklessness right now. He's been doing that all season long. This is, look, look at the power. Look how he refuses to go down. Watch him try to finish. Oh, I love that. That is a big time effort from a big time sophomore player. First and goal, South Carolina. Davis got underneath the first would-be tackler and gets down to the two-yard line. Florida cannot allow Davis to get hung. If he gets rolling, they will, they'll have a long night. This Florida defense can't afford to have a two-way go. They've got to limit it one way. A big Connor McLaurin in the backfield leading the way for him now on second and goal. As they go I formation here. Play action. Here's Shaw. And he's looking to the back of the end zone to Rory Anderson. It'll be third and goal. One of the things that's happening as we're watching the game here, there's another game going on in that man's head. And it's a sideline. And Steve Spurrier is one of the great play callers, field play callers in all of college football. And he waits to see. He usually doesn't get warmed up till about the second or third series. But right now, he's seeing things pretty good. Empty backfield on third and goal. Connor Shaw looked for the design run, but he was tracked down in the backfield by Ronald Powell. Michael Taylor and Ronald Powell in there just like that and it was just like that because dj dirk and the defensive coordinator for florida dialed himself up a blitz and they did a nice job of not showing it you see they pulled the left guard and he came through and powell powell was right on top of him powell, uh, uh, i think he, connor shaw wanted a timeout just before the snap he did but you see how fast he took it down when he realized he shouldn't call it so elliot fry the 150-pound freshman from Frisco, Texas, in to attempt the 25-yarder. And Fry gets South Carolina on the board first. Been a tough month for Will Muschamp, but his defense held there when it was down in... Tough environment here for Florida. Yes! It's a woe is me mentality right now. Murphy is walloped. It has just been a tough day for the Gators. You can feel the frustration from the defense of Florida. I don't like losing. I certainly don't like the product we're putting on the field, and that's my responsibility. Florida hasn't lost five straight since they were winless all the way back in 1979. That's what they're trying to avoid tonight. It's been a tough week for Will Muschamp. A lot of criticism out there, but... He got the endorsement from the administration, athletic director Jeremy Foley and school president. And injuries have taken a toll this year on Florida's their athletic director Jeremy Foley looks on tonight here at South Carolina. This is Patton on the return. And Solomon Patton with a good return as he cuts back across the 30-yard line. Let's check in the studio with Wendy. Hi, Joe Jess. Thank you. We check on Georgia and Auburn. It's 37-31. Tigers under two minutes to play. But Aaron Murray, just a, a gutsy run right here, plows his way into the end zone. It was reviewed, but still stands. 38-37, Georgia. Game of great interest to those here in South Carolina, Auburn and Georgia as they watch both games they want to see Auburn stay the course well, take Skyler's advantage morning. of the tiebreakers yeah. in the SEC East here's Skyler Morningwig's first snap in college football and he hands it off to Kelvin Taylor freshman running back tackled by Kelsey Quarles so that is snap number one in the career of the redshirt freshman Skyler Morningwig the son of the longtime NFL coach Marty Currently the Jets offensive coordinator. And 
remembered for his time with the Detroit Lions, hired by one Matt Miller. Yeah, I hired. I've known Skyler since he's a little guy. I talked to Marty this afternoon. I said, you have any advice for your son? He said, I give him the same advice I gave him since he was a little boy. Keep your eyes downfield. <laughs> that's, that's good advice. He said, let the Florida coaches coach him. They know what they're doing. Second and eight. Then they keep it on the ground as they are backed up. As it was Kawan Lewis coming in and making the tackle. The impact players are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. This matchup of the Florida offense against that great front of South Carolina. Well, we already talked about Skyler. He's going to just have to play within himself. And then they've got to get their running game going, which means Kelvin Taylor. Why? Clowney and Quarles on the other side are as good as it gets. Quarles has had a phenomenal year. And Clowney... Clowney's skills are better than any that I've seen in a long, long time. There's Trey Burton now. He's, he has played Wildcat often throughout his career. Slot receiver now, but we've seen him at fullback and running back. Tight end during his four years with the Gators. The defense, 12 players in the formation. Five yards, still third down. Hubert Owens leads this crew tonight. And assesses the five-yard penalty against South Carolina. As you see Tyler Murphy helping out there on the sidelines with Skyler Morningwig. Murphy, the junior from Weathersfield, Connecticut, who suffered a shoulder injury against LSU. has been battling it since, and it worsened last week against Vanderbilt. And thus the start for Morningwig. Third down and two after the penalty. And Taylor patiently waiting for those blocks and moving the chains for the Gators out to the 47-yard line. Well, J.T. Surratt right there, Tess. If he doesn't make that tackle, there's nothing but green to the end zone. That was, that was a nice job of coming across and hustling to the ball because he just saved six. He's one of the more consistent performers up front for South Carolina. Here's Taylor again. And just a gain of maybe a yard and a half as he was taken down by Lewis. Tess, you know, so much has been talked about this year with Jadavian Clowney. And when you really, when you watch the tape on him, you can see what everybody's excited about. And they get down, you know, people get on him about not playing hard. And I, I don't really see it that much. My biggest concern with Clowney is, is he plays when he wants to play, seemingly. And if that's the case, if he's a guy who plays when he wants to, those guys are dangerous, man. And sometimes they show up and they'll throw up a clunker. And here's Trey Burton. And as he goes with the end around, and Valdez showers with a good gainer as Florida goes with Burton at quarterback, and they get showers who does have speed to the outside with a 25-yard gain. And what they're really doing right there is all they're doing is they're running the option right at Clowney and letting him make a choice. And then it's on it's on Burton to make a good choice. That time he did, and Showers was able to pick it up. And I think it gives you a sense of the mix we're going to get tonight between Morningweg and Burton. Absolutely. And look, this is the first time Skyler Morningweg's playing. You can't dump it all on him. And keep it on the ground with Taylor again. And unable to spin free as Sherrod Go Lightly was there among those meeting him. So Tess, here's here's what you got. You have a, a quarterback who's never taken a snap. You have an offensive line that is minus a lot of starters. And even with the guys you do have, you have to move them around so you lose continuity. So you have to put a game plan together with what you do have. And so what you do have right now is you've got Kelvin Taylor and you've got Burton. Second down and nine. And once again coming around is Patton as he is dragged down from behind by Jimmy Legree. There are cheers going on here at Williams Bryce because just moments ago this is what happened with just a half minute to play between Auburn and Georgia. Can you believe that? On a fourth and 18. <laughs> That's Remember, South Carolina 
wants Auburn to win that game so that they can stay alive and try to take advantage of their tiebreaker against Missouri and earn a trip to the SEC title game. First down run now, flag comes down. So we're getting roars from all over the place. Reacting to the action on the field in front of us at williams Bryce, and reacting to what's happening on the TVs based on Auburn and Georgia. Offense. All 11 players never got set prior to the snap. Five-yard penalty. Tess, our booth up here is open. You can see on both sides, and the people here are going. <laughs> They're going crazy. Look at these, look at these people. Yeah, we're surrounded by fans who are embracing, hugging, high-fiving. They, they they're they're they rooting for each Auburn other. more than they're rooting for <laughs> South Carolina right now. Well, of course, they need to take care of their own business here as Ford is mounting a decent-looking drive. And Kelvin Taylor spins down to the 16-yard line. All right, so, so now you see they've showed their cards, has Florida offensively. Rempice knows he's got to be able to throw the football, I mean, uh, run the football. He's got to control it inside. So now if you're Lorenzo Ward, you're the defensive coordinator for South Carolina, now you start now you start playing numbers game. You start loading your box a little bit, and you show, and show the Florida offense, we're not going to let you run. You try to get out of it and put it back on them to make a choice. Second and ten. The morning wake throw his... First pass here as they come a little misdirection and Solomon Patton is stacked up at about the 13 yard line a flag comes down. That's Trenton Brown who lost his helmet so he'll have to go out for a play. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 77. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Still second down. So, Tess, they will take that back. And the reason you want that is you want to put them in a throwing situation. You want to see exactly what young Sky Guy Morningwig has with that arm. And, of course, J.D. Clowney. Ready to hunt you down. They keep it simple to Fullwood. And he can only manage to get to the 20-yard line. And that's smart for the first throw. You make it a simple completion on the outside. Now, this is the first quarter. It's still the first series. But what you're going to have to do eventually is you're going to have to throw the ball down the field or else you're going to be playing in a 10-yard bubble. You can't do that. They'll load the box test, which they're already starting to do, dropping safeties down, and then they're going to tighten the coverage on the outside. That's what you do. If you have a young quarterback, make him show what he is, and you bring pressure, and you tighten your coverage. Nine plays into this drive for Florida, and that was the first pass for Morningweg. A three-yard pass. Third and 14. Play clock is counting down. As they go with the direct snap to Taylor. And Taylor breaks free into the end zone. Touchdown, Gators. That is a great call by Brent Peace. He is saying, okay, you're going to load the box. We're still going to find a way to run it. And they run right at the numbers. This is completely on Kelvin Taylor. Watch his feet, he stays in bounds, and then finishes right here. That's great awareness and a great job by that Florida running game. And Austin Harden will add the extra point. It was third and 14, and Taylor took it all the way. 20-yard touchdown run, and Florida has the Columbia or South Carolina as the longest home streak in the country of 15 games. Kakabus was party central today. NASCAR season is coming down to one race. Jimmy Johnson on the brink of a sixth championship. The Ford EcoBoost 400 at Homestead, Miami, and coverage will start Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN.
see South Carolina players glancing up at the big board here at Williams Bryce as they want to monitor what's happening between Georgia and Auburn. They need number seven Auburn to hold on and then they will see if they can take advantage of that thrilling win they had against Missouri which has given them a tiebreaker in the race for the SEC East. Here's Farrow Cooper from about a yard and a half deep and he only manages to get to the 16 tackle by Keanu Neal. Connor Shaw back on offense for Carolina when we return. Stay with us. Pacers Knicks at seven. Rockets hands here at Williams Bryce cheering during that TV timeout turned around watching the jumbotron as Auburn in miraculous fashion holds on to defeat Georgia and that helps South Carolina's cause greatly. And so has this guy all season long Mike Davis. So now that it's official and Auburn in a thrilling finish has defeated Georgia. Here's how South Carolina can win the SEC East have to win tonight last conference game then. Mizzou must lose one of their final two games and they got tough ones there Ole Miss and Texas A&M and it's all because of that thrilling double overtime comeback win that'll act as the tiebreaker for South Carolina but they trail Florida right now here in the first Connor Shaw a little pitch and catch to Demir Bird interesting thing was going on right now when you watch this Florida defense they played a lot of man-to-man -man tests tonight. I'm not seeing that. This is just a second series. But what they're doing is they're rushing, trying to keep Shaw in the pocket, and then they're playing zone to try to get eyes back on Shaw in case he does take off and run. They can make a break. But what happens then is you have holes open in the zone, and because you're not getting real pressure, Shaw's been finding them. So DJ Durkin, the defensive coordinator for Florida. That's the game plan tonight. This is Sean Carson. <laughs> There's some major hitting going on down there tonight. Watch the finish on this thing. Back up inside. Right. Boom. Right there. That's Dante Fowler, number six. He showed up in an angry mood. Sets up the second in about eight. And he's a big recruit. A couple years ago, they got away from Florida State. They loved his productivity at that buck end position. Second and eight. Fowler was coming hard that time. And wrestling for the ball flat comes in as it was Vernon Hargraves defending against Shaq Rowland. That time they did lock up one on one outside. Hargraves was on Rowland. Shaw saw it and he went with it right away. Good read by Shaw. Pass on the first. Defense. Automatic first down. Hargraves has quickly emerged as a very good cover guy, but maybe a little too much here against Roland. They got there a little too soon. That right hand getting in there just a touch early. You know, Hargraves gets to start tonight because Roberson, as Maria Taylor mentioned to you, is out because of a violation of team rules, but this Hargraves kid's a good kid test. This is a good set of corners that the Florida defense has. Fifth in the league with three interceptions. New freshman. Show on first down. Tried to get free, but struggled. And it was Leon Orr getting to him. Let's check in with Wendy. Tess, thank you. Dr. Pepper 10 conference update with good reason. As you mentioned, the roar went up at Williams Bryce. South Carolina fans, happy to see this. Here's how it happened. Auburn, Georgia, 30 seconds to play. Nick Marshall to Ricardo Lewis, touchdown Tigers, and it is now final. Auburn beats Georgia, moves on, sets up a tremendous Iron Bowl on November 30th. Test. The way it should be, Wendy. Auburn and Alabama with something on the line. Ricardo Lewis, 73-yard miracle on fourth and 18 with 25 seconds remaining. Shaw sprinting and finding Anderson and look at the long striding tight end inside the 30 yard line he picked up a good block from Bruce Ellington and so this is a nice job by the old ball coach because he knows that this Florida defense is trying to keep him inside so what does he do it's a called rollout kind of a sprint action get him on the edge 
and then allow your tight end to come to you. That's a great play call. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. With a lot on the line, Carolina thinking SEC title game. Florida trying to break out of that losing streak. Watching the SEC on ESPN. Glad you're doing it with us. Joe Tessitor, Matt Millen, Maria Taylor, and Will Muschamp on the sidelines for Florida. This has been a tough stretch, but he said, you know, we had a good week. Spirited practices, pleased with the mental attitude. And his team coming off those four straight losses with a 7-3 lead against number 10, South Carolina. Here's Mike Davis on first down and just a couple of yards there as he was tackled by Dante Fowler. Look at this South Carolina offense and this offensive line has steadily gotten better tests as the years gone on. They stayed healthy and that's a big deal. This is the healthiest, healthiest, that's easy for me to say, the healthiest this team has been this deep into the season for a long time. And Coach Spurrier, he knows it and he's, he's really pleased with it because that man right there is the key and he's healthiest also there's Sean second and eight and that was just a little too much for the six foot five Rory Anderson you know we talk about protections and then we've talked about Mike Davis as a runner but Mike Davis what impresses me is what how all around back he is look at him with the chip I mean, he, he knows what he's got to be able to do on the outside, and so he does it. That's a nice job of protection. This kid catches the ball well. He runs well. He and Kadeem Carey, when I've watched them, they, they're the, probably the two most well-rounded backs I've seen in college football. Davis averaging 117 yards a game. That leads the SEC, 11th in the country. Third and eight. And thrown to the outside of Bruce Ellington. Pressure came from Jared Davis. Jared Davis just a freshman. Playing at linebacker getting his first start here. And again, that's a nice job by DJ Durkin. Just rolling the bones a little bit and getting some pressure with the blitz up inside. And freshman Elliot Fry will come back on. Between 40 and 49, he's four of six. As long as 44, this is from 45. And he hits his second of the night. As Florida still leads by one. Two long drives for South Carolina, two field goals for the Gamecocks. Connor Shaw, a little frustrated, just off the mark there. Joe's prep high school back in Philly where he was coached by Dave Infante there. And the son of a longtime NFL coach, Marty Morningweb, who's the offensive coordinator for the Jets. And that's significant, Joe, and let me tell you why. Coaches, kids, generally have a good sense of how games are played, what has to be done, and they and they are heady. And Morningweb is the same kind of guy. Skyler is a heady guy. And is mishandled by Patton. And it'll be a touchback. Let's check in with Wendy. Jeff, thank you. We take a look at Texas Tech. Already leading Baylor here by a touchdown. 7-0. Then Baker Mayfield finds Jace Amaro. 20 yards later, it's a two-touchdown game. 14-0 Texas Tech in the first quarter. Wow. That'll wake some people up as Baylor is in a hole. And those freshman quarterbacks at Texas Tech have been quite a story this year. Baylor, number five in the country, trying to stay unbeaten, but they're going to have some work to do tonight. Skyler Morningweg out there with Mac Brown as the featured back now. And Mac Brown rips off a good run here past midfield all the way down near the 43-yard line, finally taken down by Jazz Elder. This is a big offensive line. And while not having a lot of continuity, it's still a physical group. And at one point, Brent Pease, their offensive coordinator, is just saying, look, we're going to have to run at eight-man front, so get used to it. And so that's exactly what they're doing. 
They're committing an extra number down to the box, and they're still running at it. 32-yard run by Big Mac. Clowney rides him down, and a flag comes in. Jadavian Clowney looks like he's reaching for his slow. leg there. Yep, he's hurt. And you can see him writhing in pain. And as Clowney went down at the end of that play as he came charging in on the tackle of Mac Brown, but now writhing in pain on the turf here. Yeah, he came off the backside. They didn't block him. He has phenomenal speed for a big man. He's 6'7", 275 pounds, but he can run like a little guy. So the All-America defensive end. Offense, number 67. 10-yard penalty. Still first down. Watch Clowney coming in here. You can see some bodies flying in at the end of that play. And now Clowney getting up and walking off with the help of a trainer as he is favoring that right leg they'll take a short break as they tend to JD at 11 a.m. on ESPN 2 That's those two shows they'll be talking a lot about Clowney next year sure that's will. my guess he, I'm sure he'll come out first and 20 after the penalty and they keep it on the ground with Mac Brown who was running hard earlier on this drive so there's Clowney and show you the injury one more time and try to see exactly what happened here at the end of this play see two Florida an offensive lineman and a tight end and then look at him wince when he tries to put weight on that right leg Maria Taylor is down there near the South Carolina bench and she'll be tracking down an update as to the status of Jadevian Clowney. Second and 15 for Florida, who started Skylar Morningweg, the redshirt freshman at quarterback, with Tyler Murphy injured. But we've also seen this guy, Trey Burton, the do-it-all player who's played plenty of Wildcat throughout his career as he gives it to Showers. And Valdez Showers can't find any running room as he was tracked down by Chaz Elder. And still sets up third and ten. So eventually, this Florida offense is going to have to throw the football. Now there's the football equivalent of rub a little dirt on it. Just throw some tape on that. Yeah, that's all you do. Tape it up, keep it nice and tight. In the old days, they'd say, George Anderson, our old trainer, would say, Dad, tape an aspirin to it. You'll be all right. <laughs> now this isn't where Florida feels that they'll be all right. Third and nine. They wanted managed down and distance with Morningweg starting tonight. And they keep it simple for the redshirt freshman as he gets it complete. But the fullback, Ajabi, couldn't find much at all. Just the second pass of the night for Skylar Morningweg. And now you got your second South Carolina defender down. That's Gerald Dixon. Who is, act, who is in there because of Clowney. Yeah, Dixon and Sutton have been helping out a lot at the other end. Mason, and then it. on fourth and four, they got some movement up front. That was Kelsey Quarles. He's pointing the other way, but the flag did come in. Let's let them clean this up. It was Trey Burton who shifted under center. That was well executed. Outside. Defense in the neutral zone. Five penalty. He's Result convinced the there was down. movement on the other side. So Will Muschamp. There's Kelsey Quarles right there. Now let's see if he sees anything inside. No. No, nothing. Muschamp yeah. sent out the punt formation and then put Burton under center on fourth and four, and they drew them off. And Clowney is back in. Remember, he left limping off just moments ago. We're going to change that down mark and get it back to first down. But that was a huge penalty. Remember, they were first and 20, and they ended up getting the first. And the Florida's offense needs anything they can get tonight. And once again, they shift out the formation. They go with the direct snap. 
And Taylor gets his way just inside the 30-yard line, tackled by Quarles as they sent Morning Wegg out, and they went with the direct snap to Taylor. It worked in the first quarter on the touchdown run. Yes, this is what I really like. Look, Brent Peace, the offensive coordinator, has just been getting mauled down there. And, you know, and he's feeling the pressure, but I'm telling you right now, what you're seeing is brilliant coaching. And he's protecting his young quarterback, he's taking what he has, and he's using it, and he's running it against numbers. Second and seven. And here goes Taylor again! How about those Gators tonight, folks? Spirited on the road. 29-yard touchdown run by Kelvin Taylor, his second of the night. It's a great call. That time, they didn't give numbers. They kept that two-deep look, and so the numbers favored the run, and they're going to run right at it. Watch Taylor just using his eyes, and then once he gets to second level, uh, there's nothing. There's nothing was going to stop him. That's a, that's a nice run and a great call by Brent Pease. Harden puts it through. And don't you feel sorry for Florida? Three and four in the SEC. Losers of four straight. Oh, no. Watch out. Here they are ready to chomp again. Murphy out this week. And Skyler Morningweg playing quarterback. And Brent Keyes with some creative play calling. As Kelvin Taylor has two first half touchdowns. Florida has a 14 to 6 lead. As this is a short kick fielded at the eight yard line. Sydney Rose brings it out. Now, remember, this is a maligned offensive line, but I'm going to show you a couple guys here. Max Garcia, number 76. This is called getting to second level. He's going to come down with a double team. That's well done. Now he's got to come off and get on another block. That's second level. Once you get to the second level, they have a crease. And once you get the crease, then Taylor's into the second, into the secondary for six. They put Silverman, the other tackle, at tight end. Garcia played, and then Coney at guard, and they were masterful. 149 yards rushing for Florida. They've only attempted two passes. Both were thrown right near the line of scrimmage for a mere eight total yards passing. And now Mike Davis gets to work a bit here out to the 30-yard line. He was tracked down by Jalen Watkins. Watkins made himself a shoestring right there. And if he doesn't, he's got the edge. Davis, Davis is running hard. He brought his A game tonight. I really like the secondary of Florida. So not there without Marcus but, Roberson, but yeah. Vernon Hargraves, a five-star recruit, steps right in. You got Watkins there, and Brian Poole, and Cody Riggs, and of course, Luchez Purifoy, one of the best athletes on the team. Second and five, Shaw running option as he pitches to Davis, but the pursuit got to him. That was Ronald Powell and Brian Poole going down the line. Powell got in on the tackle, Poole made the play. Poole did a fantastic job of working off a block on the edge. When you're going to run outside, your corners have to tackle. And if you don't have corners who can be physical, you can forget that defensive scheme. This secondary tackles, all of them. Both safeties do well, and their sub packages do well, and they'll have to right here on this third and about four. Here's Davis straight up the middle. It'll be a first down for South Carolina. Crowd didn't like the way they were there thinking that maybe he got a horse collar or something, but that's just the reckless running of Mike Davis. He is not going down easy tonight, Des. Watch him finish this run. Big hole. That's no horse collar. He grabbed him in the front. Now Powell grabs him right around the shoulder and rips him down. I think the crowd reacting to the way Davis's body went down. They assumed the horse collar or a face mask, but not the case here. First down with the ball just cresting near the 40-yard line. And here is Jack Rowland out to midfield. Barry Gorman with the tackle at midfield of Jack Rowland. 
Mr. Football in South Carolina a couple years back the fourth straight Mr. Football to go to the Gamecocks and that's important with the recent success they've had on the field to keep that homegrown talent that used to go elsewhere in the SEC corral them right here in state second and one now and they pass here again on second and one it's going to be right at that line to make with Jameer Bird as Hargraves and Poole combined on the tackle let's check in with Wendy Nix Says thank you, a Taco Bell studio update. And Texas Tech has strikes again. Baylor did get on the board, but here's Baker May Mayfield to Eric Ward. The five-yard strike makes it 20 to 7, Texas Tech. Tess? Thanks, Wendy. Baker Mayfield outdoing Bryce Petty, who's getting Heisman consideration this week. Let's we'll see if Baylor can come back in that game in the Big 12. Here's first down with Shaw. And that was too much. Looking over the middle to Roland, he was covered by Vernon Hargraves. We just got done saying how healthy that the South Carolina team has been. There goes Gerald Dixon. Keep in mind, they brought him in after Clowney had been hurt. Clowney dinged, and now Dixon leaving the field. One of the two Gerald Dixons on the team. As a brother, Gerald Dixon Jr., who plays inside defensive tackle, this Gerald Dixon is the speed rusher on the outside. His half brother is the 318 pounder on the inside. Second and 10. Shaw steps in against the pressure. Now gets to the outside. Remember, he's got pretty good wheels, but he is tracked down that time by Ball. Tess, you just said something great as we're going to go to Maria. Ball did a phenomenal job inside out. Maria? Yeah, guys, Gerald Dixon, you saw him going back into the locker room. He has a hip contusion. Training staff did put some ice on it, but decided to take him back. Also, defensive tackle J.T. Surratt has a hip contusion as well, guys. You want to say thanks, Maria Miller? Thanks, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to say this is the SEC pause on ESPN. Yeah. That's my goal. You keep gunning for my job. <laughs> Play clock is running down here on third and ten. Shaw gets it off in time. And that ball was almost intercepted by Dante Fowler. That was thrown right into that defensive line. And Tess, I'll tell you what's happening right now. This Florida team, which in the week, they were talking about it being a fragile group, right now is gaining confidence. It's gaining confidence. It's starting to believe it can do some things. And when a team gains confidence, you're going to get their best. And their best can be pretty darn good. You can see the numbers. The SEC rank. And they believe they're good. <laughs> they're really good. Here's Tyler Hole's punt. And as they scatter from it, and it takes a good Florida bounce out near the 23-yard line. Shadavian Clownies back out there. Was injured earlier. We'll see what he offers up now. Out of Florida some years back, Fred Taylor. Well, his son's not too bad either, Matt. His son is outstanding. Not as big and physical as Fred, but quicker than his father was. Kelvin Taylor, he brought his A game tonight. Already hovering right at 70 yards. 69 yards. Look at his average. 20-yard touchdown, then a 29-yard touchdown on a night when they've needed him most. Because of the inexperience at quarterback Skyler Morningwig playing in his first game. Now here's Mac Brown. As Brown gets some pad leverage out to the 26 yard line. Now look at the play selection for Florida, and you understand right away what they're dealing with tonight. As they have 16 runs framed against just two short passes by Skyler Morningwig. Test. Now, see, we're looking at those things, but keep in mind. South Carolina is looking at the same thing. So if you're Brent Pease and you're on the other side, at one point here, you're going to have to take a shot with Skyler Morningwood. Just let him take a shot down the field that stretches the field and lets them know you're not going to be completely run game oriented. Second and seven. And once again, Brown out to the 30-yard line. What do you got, Wendy Nix? 
Joe Tess, just a reminder, Stanford and USC now underway on ABC, scoreless early in the first quarter. And on ESPN, the number one team in the land, Alabama, on the road at Mississippi State, the Tide leading by three. Tess? Well, Coach Corso picked USC in the upset of Stanford tonight. And we got an upset right here brewing in the first half. Third and three. As Trey Burton once again lined up for that direct snap. And Clowney is back. Limped off the field minutes ago and makes another spectacular play now. The test, remember before he went to break, I said I'd run right at him. And instead, they chose to run away from him. And not only that, they chose not to block him. That's that's not a good idea. How many times do you see these plays with Clowney when his feet leave the ground? He just goes super fly and takes the guy out. Time and time again, these tackles for loss, and you can see how effective he is limping off the field, but good enough to still pull off stuff like that. So if you're home and you're wondering why don't they block him, that fly sweep action is supposed to hold him. He just doesn't pay any attention as we get a punt and a flag down. Flag is down as Hampton starts returning it. Up to about the 47-yard line. We will check on that. Veteran SEC referee Hubert Owens working tonight's game. He's got a good crew. He does. Had a nice visit with the guys earlier. You know what I like about experienced officials like illegal formation. On the offense, there was another interception violation that ended up on the end of the line. That penalty is five yards added to the end of the return. First down. Well, what I like about experienced officials like Hubert Owens is they are always in control of a game, and that's what you look for with a good officiating crew. They don't get out of control; they're in control. This group is one of them. And South Carolina would like to be in control of this game. Number 10 team in the country. Trailing here at home to Florida, J.D. Clowney making his presence felt. In August 2014, South Carolina is going to be a big part of the launch of that network come next season. But this season still has a lot of goals right in front of it for the Gamecocks if they can get past this pesky Florida team that's playing inspired ball. And that front does their job. Coverage downfield, and Shaw goes down. And what you're seeing is exactly what they're looking for, Tess. Powell did a nice job of keeping Shaw in the pocket. That's where they want him. They won't, don't want him outside the pocket. They feel that that's where he really creates problems and stretches the defense. Powell did a nice job. Didn't make the sack, but forced it back inside. He made the play. Backs him up to a second 13. Here's Shaw. And that was sailing on him as he was looking for Shaq Rowland, but coming in hard was Vernon Hargraves. Well, I like this Hargraves kid. He's been playing a lot in their sub packages, but this kid's got skills. Everybody in the country liked him when they were recruiting him, and you see the talent coming through. Oh, it's easy to see why. Yeah, he's going to run right through him, and he's right on top of it. He's playing off coverage, and when you play off coverage, you have to see both quarterback and receiver. He played it perfectly. Five-star guy was the star of last year's recruiting class, and he's starting tonight as Marcus Roberson is out in violation of team rules for the freshman Hargraves. Tied for third in the SEC and passes defended. Third and 13 now. Shaw over the middle, gets it complete to Anderson, but he's taken down a yard short by Jalen Watkins, and we'll see what they do here on fourth down and about one at the 39-yard line. Looks like they're staying on the field. Watkins right on top of it. That'll step up forward and fourth and about a little, little longer, longer than a yard. And don't even hesitate here. Just over three minutes to play in the half. Fourth and one at the 39. Bringing a blitz. Davis. Little wiggle and a first down. Test, why wouldn't you? 
If you have the SEC's leading rusher, you hand it, you trust him. And that's what the old ball coach does. He trusts Mike Davis, and he responds. Six point one per carry tonight for Mike Davis. First set of downs for South Carolina. Shaw's going to take a shot, and just beyond Demir Bird. What do you got, Wendy? Jeff Tess, it looks like we've got a ball game. Baylor had trailed by as many as tw as 14. It's 2014 Texas Tech here. When Bryce Petty finds Antoine Goodley in the end zone, and the Bears take the lead, 21-20 over Texas Tech. Antoine Goodley is just pure speed in that Baylor offense. They're without Tevin Reese. He's out for the year now, one of their experienced receivers. But Goodley's been such a difference maker for Baylor this year as they have stormed back to take the lead number five has against Texas Tech. Second and ten here. That's Ellington in motion. It's Ellington getting the ball on the fly sweep. Got a good block by Davis, but he couldn't take advantage as he was forced out by Cody Riggs. You know, in all of football, you watch it in pro football, you watch it in college football, you don't see a lot of good tackling tests. And I gotta tell you, right now, I am so impressed with the tackling I'm seeing on both sides of the ball, but really, really showing up from this Florida team is with their secondary. These safeties and these corners are tackling exceptionally well. well they got real talent in that defensive backfield, that's for sure. Third and five here. And turning upfield for the first down was Nick Jones. Remember, it was Nick Jones who had the touchdown catch with less than a minute to play against Mizzou to tie that game and force overtime. I like what the old ball coach is doing here. He knows he's getting boxed in. And so he's taking Connor Shaw and he's putting him on the edge intentionally. And when that happens, it stretches your defense and it's relationships in defenders that you're really messing with. Here's Shaw again, first down. Downfield and open, but overthrows Bruce Ellington. Ellington had steps on Jalen Watkins. That's the second one, Tess. He had him, Demir Bird in the corner. You can't miss that shot. And, and here's another one. And he's got him beat. And that's a poor job by Watkins. His eyes were back in at the quarterback. That's not who you're defending. When you're in man coverage, watch your man. Forget the quarterback. You get hungry eyes, you get beat. So I roll the eyes by the head ball coach as it makes for second and ten now. Shaw. And she just scoots out near the 20 yard line. That was Michael Taylor who cut down at his legs. Minute 44 remaining. It'll be third down. He's managed to get outside the pocket. The crowd wasn't happy, and Muschamp wasn't happy because it looked like Fowler got held on that. He had the edge. Fowler fell down. Shaw gets to the outside, sets up this third and six. Timeout, Florida. Florida's going to call a timeout. Will Muschamp is irate. Timeout. Florida. I want to see what was happening with Big Dante man. Fowler in the midst of that line. Watch number six. Yeah, you can see him right up here on the top. Fowler's going to turn to run. <laughs> he gets, not only did he pull him down, then he, he laid out of old Corey Robinson, did a nice job. Now, Corey Robinson's only 6'8", 341 pounds. That's easy so. to count from underneath that. Of course it is. He's a cake. May as well have a dump truck roll over you. FaceTime profile is brought to you by Edward Jones. You know Will Muschamp last year, the SEC Coach of the Year, his third year at Florida. But the struggles this year, he came up under Saban, Mac Brown, and Jeremy Foley, their athletic director this year, gave him the endorsement, says nothing has changed, and Muschamp with the four-game losing streak. And it feels bad. So he's always been a guy that believes 10% of life is what happens to you, 90% is how you react to it. 
But this thing, he said, you just can't point a finger at it. And point a finger at the injuries they've had. But tonight they've been playing spirited ball here on the road. A tough task against number 10. Third and six. Flag is down as Shaw will throw this into the hedges behind the end zone. Ball's gone, can't find it, hedge ate it. <laughs> they may not be able to dig that one out. Yeah, they tried to find Demir Bird in the back of the end zone. He actually ran out of the end zone, and there's the hedge monster. Never to be, oh, there's a spotting possibly. Nope, no, that's not it. Never to be seen from again. Check with Hubert Owens, the referee. Holding offense number 71. The penalty is refused. Fourth down. So they will decline that, make for a fourth down, and we will once again see the freshman, Elliot Fry. Interesting there. Because they had a chance to move him back 10 yards, and they chose not to. The reason they're doing that is they're saying, okay, look, we'd rather take this fourth down because we believe Shaw has the moxie to be able to make it on another fourth down, a third down try. Ooh. Fry just sent this off to the right. He was two for two prior to that. Do well, you think Florida's charged up to try to snap out of it? Minute 31 remaining, and they're still up by eight. And as it just sails off to the right, let's check in with Wendy Nixon studio. Joe Tess, thank you. Coming up with the Outback Steakhouse Halftime Report, an absolute thriller from Auburn, Alabama. The Seminoles and Buckeyes continue to roll. They look strong, and we'll check on USC and Stanford already underway out west. Todd and Robert join me at the half. That miracle down there on the plains, 43-38 Auburn. Calvin Terrell continues with his workload. Maria, what's up with Jadevian Clowney? Well, he came off, the training staff tells me that he was hit in the foot. They actually wrapped up his entire foot around his shoe, and he's been telling his teammates that he feels fine. He's still been showing a little favoritism to that right leg, though, when he's out there playing. Came in and made a spectacular play after being tended to by the medical staff. What a managed first half by the Florida offense. They have kept it on the ground consistently and moved the chains again with Kelvin Taylor. Go back and show you the injury that Maria was referring to. Now you can see he's just going to come off the edge again, not blocked. But somebody whacked that foot of his. He's on the sideline. They wrapped it. And he came back in and he did the same thing again. Unblocked, makes a good play. You're going to have to handle that going to have to forget that fly sweep action. S.G. Davian Clowney, probably the most talented defensive end, not probably, that I've seen in years, Tess. He's a rule breaker. Years. He Absolutely. can break the rules with the athleticism, and that's what he's done a couple times against that fly sweep. And here goes Taylor. Time and time again, Kelvin Taylor. They know they're going to him. Morningwig's only attempted two passes and they've both been short throws right at the line of scrimmage let me say this test right now it doesn't matter who's at quarterback because you got a hot kill taylor and what he's doing is he's got almost 90 yards already that time they took Clowney. Clowney tried to take a hard inside move garcia just took him shoved him down inside taylor with great vision bounced it back outside 173 rushing yards for florida as a team 21 run plays only two pass plays in this first half and this time he was stacked up. Tackle for loss. And as that clock will count down to end this first half soon enough. So in a managed game, Brent Pease is saying this. Look, we're going to take it right where we're at. We're going to take our 14-6 lead. We're not going to take any chances. We know what we're doing. You know what we're doing. But we're executing. And so they're going to take that and his execution right into the locker room for halftime. Nearly a two-touchdown underdog, and they lead by eight at the half. Let's go down to the field to Maria. Coach, only two pass plays attempted by Florida. What have you seen out of your run defense? Yeah, I think they threw that one behind the line, didn't they? Well, we knew they were going to try to run the ball. They just run it down our throat uh, uh, some. But, uh, yeah, we're not scoring touchdowns, so we're behind. But hopefully we'll play better second half. What's kept you out of the end zone? 
Well, we missed a few passes and we messed up some calls. They've stopped us. Get Thanks, in. Coach. Kelvin Taylor with two first half touchdowns for Florida. 20 yarder and then a 29 yarder. Will Muschamp has had a rough week with the critics, but his Gators are leading number 10. Let's join Wendy, Todd, and Robert back in the studio for the Outback Steakhouse halftime report. Joe Tess, thank you. The Florida Gators. After the offer in Georgia game, they got Georgia to catch another loss. They need a win tonight, and they need Missouri to lose one of their games, either against Ole Miss or Texas A&M. But all of a sudden, here's this Florida team. And it's a Florida team that is decimated with injury, knew what it had to do, and in the first half, they've been flawless. And, oh, yeah, Kelvin Taylor, boy, did he bring his A game test all night long. And the thing that's been so impre impressive is that South Carolina knows he's going to run the ball. They know it. They've talked about it on the sidelines. And Kelvin Taylor is still answering. And then Connor Shaw has had his opportunities. But those opportunities, he's not hit. He's a little bit off here in this first half. The second half, he'll regroup. That's what he did in Missouri. I expect to see the same thing because he's a gamer. That was just 9 of 19. Taylor had the two touchdowns and 86 yards rushing for the Gators. And Skyver Morningwood starting at quarterback. I mean, Florida's got an eight-point lead against a top-ten team in the country with a quarterback that's only thrown two passes for eight yards. Funny things happen in this game on Saturday nights, don't they, folks? <laughs> it's Landon R. will kick away for South Carolina. And it's a big boot that goes for a touchback. Let's check in with Maria Taylor. Well, Will Muschamp says they just implemented the Wildcat with Kelvin Taylor this week in practice, but he likes the execution that he's seeing. They've been able to create a lot of gaps on offense. He also says he likes his red zone defense right now, and the reason that the Florida Gators have been so successful is because they've been able to eliminate the legs of Connor Shaw. Keep in mind, they still have so much talent on defense, even with all the injuries. Florida with 10 season-ending injuries, seven starters out for the year. Antonio Morrison, the middle linebacker, among them. And here on offense, they're without Tyler Murphy, the quarterback for the past month, because Jim Driscoll is out for the season, so Skyler Morningwig got the start. And as he's done all night long, he hands off to Kelvin Taylor. They were talking about Kelvin Taylor and what you heard Maria say when with this offense you said they've, they've gotten extra they've got some running room that really goes to this offensive line and when you don't have an offensive line test that's been together a bunch communication is the biggest thing in an offensive line and when there's no continuity that's really a tough thing but right now they must be communicating extremely well because they're they're winning the battle up front second and eight Taylor gets it just beyond the 30-yard line, tackled by Kawan Lewis. That offensive line, Matt, with Garcia at left tackle and Trenton Brown at right tackle. Keep in mind, Chaz Green, DJ Humphreys, and Tyler Moore, all tackles who were ahead of them, out for the year. Watch as Jalapio come on a trap. Clowney's not even ready. There were others who weren't ready also. They were a little quick pace there. Nice trap on the inside by Jalapio, the right guard. Third and five. And once again, Morningweg splits out, and they go with the Wildcat with Taylor, but a flag comes in as their remotion. Maria told us moments ago. Before the snap, false start. Offense number 41. Five-yard penalty, still third down. She mentioned how much they like the success they've gotten out of that motion. And that's Hunter Joyce, the fullback, who they really haven't seen much of. But he's getting a great opportunity here because they're running so much and sets up this third and ten this is a position they didn't want to be in now this is a position that when you think it's been on morning wave in actuality they've run on it let's see if they pass here play clock is down to two and forward is written out after a gain of maybe three yards just the third pass of the night for Skylar Morningwig, the redshirt freshman from St. Joe's Prep back in Philly. So the South Carolina defense does exactly what it needed to do. They needed to get off and no first downs, get off of that first series. And Clowney and his troops did just that. 
Johnny Townsend into punt away, and Farrell Cooper lines up to return it back at the 30 yard line. And Cooper gets it at the 36 with a fair catch. Monday Night Football, Tom Brady and the Patriots, Cam Newton in Carolina. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN. New England and Carolina, 8.25 kickoff. It's also available on Watch ESPN. You know, you've been talking, show the pictures of the quarterbacks, but defense has been the name of the game for those Panthers. Keekley and his group up front have been playing phenomenal. You can see the ranks, but watching them in person is even better. Start and stop from Mike Davis as he goes for nine yards. Man, is he tough. Man, I really low. He's getting up or not getting up. Getting up slow. That is one tough sucker. I, he is, he's a pleasure to watch. Watch him get his pads down and then try to finish. You had one man low around his legs and then guys coming up, up top, pushing him back. And as you see him getting hit from every angle and you see his back arching with all that weight coming against him in front so as they tend to him we'll take a short break be south carolina as mike davis the leading rusher in the sec just came out of the game and number 10 south carolina trails by eight here in the third quarter sean carson in at running back now for the game cox Carson able to do his thing and get them a first down as he was brought down by Michael Taylor. Davis runs real hard, Matt, and came with a price at the end of that run. Yeah, I was watching him this week, just sitting and watching tape. And uh, unbeknownst to me, Mike Davis came in and sat down. With he him. walked into the film room while you were watching film. South yeah. Carolina film. Yeah, I told him to come in. I said, yeah, come on in. And I didn't recognize him. And so I kept on watching the tape. And then I pointed to him on the screen and said, that kid's pretty tough. <laughs> It was him. And it was him. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he's all right. <laughs> I love it. Tell them wear that number 28 jersey around when he's walking to film rooms. <laughs> They're going to keep it on the ground, and they do so with success this time. This is Sean Carson. A good spark by Carson. 13-yard gain. You know, he played on the South Carolina baseball team this past year. Missed a little bit of spring football. He's dealing with injuries his first couple of years with the Gamecocks, but now he gets some extended time as Davis is out. And Connor Shaw, he's not afraid to use those legs as he was playing a little game out there with Luchez Purifoy and dives ahead to the 33-yard line. Now, the one thing I like with Sean Carson is he's very sudden. You get the ball, and he is full speed in two steps, and those guys are rare. And so you give him a half a crack inside, and he'll be through it. Second and four. And that time he was ridden down by Cody Riggs. And so if you see that at the line of scrimmage test, what's that tell you? They're bringing pressure. Sure are. The safety Riggs was right up there. So they, they're rolling the dice, and it sets up this third and about four, or third and two, rather. And so... Uh, Let's see what they do. Let's see uh, defensively if they commit to the front to try to stop it here. Third and two. Let's see if Riggs sneaks up again. Son of the former NFL running back Gerald Riggs. Oh, Gerald, one of my old teammates. Boy, was he a tough sucker. Third and two. They're crowding that line of scrimmage again. Bringing a little bit of pressure, but Sean's got time. And he overthrows Sean Carson. Carson, Carson had, had a wheel route and ball came in with a little pressure and another overthrow by Connor Shaw. Yeah, and Shaw sees it. He needs to let this ball go a little sooner and a little more air under the ball because Carson had him beat all the way down and ball, ball saw it. He just took a bad angle. Fourth down, they're going to go for it. And Mike Davis is back in the game on fourth and two. Sprint to the near side. Shaw takes a shot downfield, and they get it! Bruce Ellington!
A couple weeks ago, it was Bruce Ellington on fourth and goal from the 15 against Mizzou. Now this on fourth and two. That same Brian Poole knew. He looked him up. You, that's called being, you have to plaster. Now they're going to go up. Oh, no, they're going to go pick for two. Nope. They're going to go for one. Yeah, you try to plaster the receivers. He tried to locate them. Couldn't get his hips slipped. And Ellington scored. They showed the formation to try to tie the game. And then they shifted out of it. And Fry just hit the extra point. So down by one. But they roll the dice. Sport well, and we give her. Volleyball and women's basketball right. at the University of Georgia. One of the SEC best. Maria Taylor. And finding herselves with us. For these <laughs> SEC prime times, she's surviving us somehow. 14 to 13. Florida just by one now. After moments ago on fourth and two, Connor Shaw put it downfield. And Bruce Ellington was in the right place. And Skyler Morningwick has to respond. But let's go back to that touchdown moments ago. Now this is just going to be man coverage right here. A pool. I want you to watch his eyes. When he rolls, his eyes go back inside, and just that instant is what gets him beat. Here comes Ellington right here. See that? His eyes are on the quarterback. His eyes should be on the man. Because as he took a lateral step, Ellington went vertical, and the result was six. Matt Brown with a gain of about a yard that time as Jordan Diggs has the tackle for South Carolina. And Tess, we've talked about it. We talked about it in the first half. But somewhere in here, they're going to have to let Hornenweg make a throw down the field. They have to. They're committing numbers to the box. Now, they've been having success running at eight men front. Eight men front. And instead, they go wildcat again. Trey Burton, the senior, the do-it-all, has played so many positions through the years. Bring a blitz. And here is Burton now. As he muscles ahead to the 29-yard line, Kelsey Quarles tackling Trey Burton. Renkies is really managing this conservatively. He doesn't want to take any chances. But at one point, you have to. You have to take a couple chances. The redshirt freshman Morningweg comes back out here for third and six. Remember, all his throws have been the quick stuff. Little screens, little quick passes at the line of scrimmage. Let's see what he goes with. On third and six. That was a long play call, which generally means pass. Morningwood being tracked down, and it goes incomplete. Flag down. As Jordan Diggs was pursuing him, and this could be a roughing the passer. Yes, as a defender, you have to pay attention to all things. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 42. 15 yards, automatic first down. Florida has benefited numerous times tonight with penalties on third downs, keeping things alive. Well, Jordan Diggs, now this is, there's no reason for that. He had to take numerous steps just to reach out and touch Morningwick here. Yeah, that, that was, there's no reason for that. Just completely pointless. He takes about three or four extra steps just to push him. So it's a first down for Florida. We'll take it any way they can get it. And Mac Brown gets them a couple of yards that time as J.D. Clowney was coming in on him. And offensive coordinator Brent Pease has done a really good job of just managing things. He knows the situation they're in. You know all the injuries to the offensive line and now Morningweg having to play quarterback when Tyler Murphy was ruled out with a shoulder injury. Play selection, dramatic differential between run and pass. Only four passes attempted all night long. And nothing that's gone downfield. They go with the end around this time as Patton cannot shake free. That's Gerald Dixon who was injured earlier tonight. Let's check in in the studio with Wendy. Joe Tess, thank you. Let's check on number one Alabama on the road at Mississippi State, leading by a field goal. And A.J. McCarron airs it out to Ryan Vogel, and it's 10 0 Bama at the half. Joe Tess? So Alabama's defense pitching a shutout 
in Starkville. Well, must champ. His offense now facing another third and long. A penalty advanced it moments ago. Let's see what they do with Morningwig out of the gun. Trying to set up the screen, and he does get it to Matt Brown, who gets the first down, and then uses a downfield block for even more. That was Solomon Patton, the 5'9", 175-pound receiver blocking downfield, Matt. Great job of blocking. A better call by the offensive coordinator. You're going to get 28 yards on third and eight, and here's why. Screens are all about feel, and it's a feel by the quarterback, the offensive line, and the defensive front. That time, Skyler Morningwig did a nice job of drawing the coverage to him, the, the defenders to him, and then dumped it off. Marquise Roberts came in and put a hit on Morningwig at the end of that as well. And direct snap now to Matt Brown. They've been mixing this in throughout the night. This is just a steady part of the diet for what this Florida offense is now with the injuries they're dealing with. So if I'm Lorenzo Ward right now, I am going to go, I'm just going to commit everything up front. I'm going to go, I'm going to lock up guys out outside man-to-man. -man. You're going to have man-to-man -man underneath. And I'm just going to say, okay, I'm going to give you nine guys. Yeah, why not? And, and then just make that, make Morningweg have to throw the football. There's Whammy, Lorenzo Whammy Ward on the field as a defensive coordinator who has to deal with this Florida run game tonight. And they will time use out. a timeout. So Florida's marching. Ward's trying to stop them. We'll find out how it plays out when we come back. 45 SEC football games next fall on the SEC Network. Live original programming. Discover what's been the most dominant conference in college football. Here's second and nine. And they go with Joyer, the fullback, the seldom used fullback, Hunter Joyer, with a carry right up the middle. Yeah, he was uh, he was getting happy because he was going to be in there to block, and heck, they threw him a crumb, and he responded. Sets up this third and short. Again, they're giving you numbers up front. They go with the eight-man front, and they're still having success running at it. And that's the thing. That's really the headline of the story of this night. South Carolina knows what's coming. Florida knows what they're going to do. And they're still having success. Third and one. Mac Brown now. Another first down. As he is inside the 10-yard line. And it'll be first and goal Gators. The nice job on that right side of the offensive line. They just get everybody on a body. That is just as good as you're going to get. Fantastic job of blocking. Tevin Westbrook does a nice job. See Silverman right there coming around. That's just that's that's good football. Here's Brown again. Good luck that time. The entire defensive line to the left and waited for Mac Brown. Philip Dukes was the first one there. That's good defense. Now you saw there was about five guys on that tackle. Dukes has a lot of potential for Steve Spurrier, big 300-pounder, clogging up the middle there. Of course, they're so talented up front with Sutton and Surratt, Quarles, and the All-American Jadevian Clowney. But can they find a stop here against this emotional, fired-up Florida team looking for some respect when people think they're down and out? Second and goal, Morningwick to pass now. And that's going to be down right away as Dunbar had his knee down at the eight-yard line as Morningweg looked at Quentin Dunbar underneath. But that's the smart thing. That's the smart thing by Brent Pease. You've got to throw. You have to loosen that thing up. There's a lot of space to throw. You're going to see him. Dunbar's going to clear. He's going to take that corner out. They're going to make a, go on a, real route, a wheel route up around the sideline. He needed to keep his feet as Dunbar had a shot. What does Brent Pease come up with this time? July formation with Mac Brown as the tailback. Load up that left side of the line. They pull him. Hello, Mr. Clowney. Welcome to third and goal. 
How fast was he in there, Millen? Well, that's what great players are supposed to do. And he did it. Watch Clowney. He's going to take that hard inside move. It wasn't even close. I mean, stop it. That's Look what, at this. That's what he does very well. Chip Thurman didn't even have a chance. So Austin Harden will come out, try to extend Florida's lead. This from 32. And it's no good. He had good rotation, trajectory, but not good aim. And that South Carolina defense denies Florida. Clowney pushed him back. Harden couldn't connect. In the 13, Florida in front of number 10, South Carolina. Florida just had a 13-play, 60-yard drive that took seven minutes and 10 seconds, and they came up empty. And Jadevian Clowney played a big part right at the end of it. Here's what happened earlier tonight with J.D. Clowney. Got injured making a tackle for loss. They taped him up. He went back in there, Millen. And they still forgot to block him and try to influence him, and that's not going to happen. And when he takes a hard inside move like that, there's no stopping Clown. He's got to tell two tackles for loss tonight, along with three others. Connor Shaw couldn't go anywhere there, and he had that third and goal play where he was in the backfield as quick as anybody could be. And because of that, it backed up Harden, who ended up missing the field goal attempt. So as it stands now, Florida still just a point lead over South Carolina. Remember how much is on the line for the Gamecocks, trying to stay alive and win the SEC East. Second and ten, Shaw. And as he gets it out to Demir Bird, who a little help there on defense from Michael Taylor, and he's forced out of bounds. And that Hargraves, he is impressive. Vernon Hargraves, watch the break on this ball. He, he went for the pick, he thought he had it. Bird came up with it. And then here come the rest of the troops to set up this third long. Third down and eight. This Florida defense, they lost Antonio Morrison for the year, their middle linebacker. Found that out this week, of course. Already playing without All-America, Dominic Easley, the defensive lineman. But a lot of talent remains, and so does a lot of pride, as that's the way they've been playing tonight against number 10. Third and eight. Go underneath, and they're yes. able to corral Bruce Ellington. That is fantastic tackling. Pool again. This has been a clinic today for defensive backs tackling. You've seen it on the edge. You've seen it inside the field. Pool's had himself a nice day, but watch him drive on the ball. You have to be patient. Once it's declared there in coverage, he sees it, and, man, he comes down. That's. I'm, I'm very impressed with the way this group has tackled today. And because of that, Tyler Hull comes on the punt away. And Purifoy is set to return back at the 35. And it is a bad punt by Hull. They're going to walk this thing off. They may find themselves up near midfield. That's exactly where Florida will take field position. Just a 25-yard punt by Hull. Shankadelic. Celebrating its ninth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kick. And to date, Allstate has contributed more than $3.3 million in those scholarship monies. And there's the Morning Wake family. There's, there's Lindsay, his mom, right here. They have watched Bobby Kate on Skyler, the right. redshirt freshman. Try to manage this game for Florida. He's done a lot of handing off to Kelvin Taylor and Mac Brown. And young Skyler is 5 for 5 for 43 yards as Brent Pease and the Florida staff has kept it simple for him. He's thrown into action when they found out Tyler Murphy couldn't play with a shoulder injury. Of course, Murphy in because Jeff Driscoll, the starters, out for the year. Broke his right ankle. Had surgery. Not an easy position to be in for a young redshirt freshman quarterback who hadn't been taking any reps until the last couple weeks. 
Second and 12. Delay handoff. And that was read all too easy by Gerald Dixon Jr. We called his name a few times here. That's because there's two of them on the defensive line. <laughs> <laughs> number 44 and number 92. One of two Gerald Dixons. They have the same father, different mothers from the same hometown, but they went to different high schools and they decided both to play at South Carolina where dad played. That's easy to say. One's Keep it simple. A, one's a big man, one's a speed guy. Same name, different body types. Clock counting down here in this third quarter. Third and 11. Taylor couldn't get to the outside. Jordan Diggs tracked him down. And South Carolina closed the gap here, but Florida still smelling upset. Fourth quarter when we come back to Kakalaki. South Carolina, number 10 team in the country. Being tested here by this Florida defense in the run game. Nearly a two touchdown underdog where they have showed up tonight. Johnson's punt takes a good Florida bounce, but it leaks into the end zone for a touchback. And for Florida, Kelvin Taylor was a big part of how they Built the lead early in the first half. He had two touchdowns, a 20-yarder and then a 29-yarder. And we've seen him with the direct snaps as they've been limiting Skyler Morningwig, the redshirt freshman quarterback. But then Connor Shaw to Bruce Ellington in the third quarter. And that has us at 14-13 with South Carolina trying to stay in the mix and arrive at the SEC title game. And Florida trying to snap out of that four game losing streak Shaw as he finds Ellington and Ellington finds his way out to midfield you can hear him call Bruce that's Bruce Ellington that's a nice job of play calling by the old ball coach again he's had success when he's gotten Shaw out on the edge keep in mind that's what Florida's defense is trying to have been trying to eliminate all night long as well John Carson now and Carson was met at the 46 yard line by Ronald Powell Here comes to Sean Carson haven't had much Mike Davis here since he he got slow he was slow getting up SEC's leading rusher not on the field right now for South Carolina second and six the trips to the left with Carson now flanking Connor Shaw have to defend this edge and they run back to the other side as they pulled and he's going to be about two yards short as Brian Poole cut down Sean Carson they got Cody Waldrip the center out in front of Carson that time. The reason I said you have to defend that edge, the numbers weren't right in that formation test. So what Connor Shaw is doing, he's getting to the line of scrimmage and he's seeing how you deploy your defense, and then he's running away from where the numbers are. So if you have four to one side, he's running to the three side. And star running back comes in now on third and two. And Florida loads that box, and it paid off as he couldn't even make it back to the line of scrimmage Darius Cummings was the first to get in there I like Darius Cummings I think he's a he's just he's a, just a sophomore big physical guy watch him come down inside I like him yeah the folks at Florida State liked him too that's where he started his career then went the Juco route before landing here at the rival Gators it's fourth down and three and South Carolina is going for it Remember, they're two for two on fourth down, including that long touchdown pass earlier tonight. If they tighten the coverage, there's nobody moving. That means they're playing a zone. They're going to bring a blitz on top of it. Running option on fourth and three. Can he get there? No, not even close. It was Jared Davis and Brian Poole in there on fourth down for the Gators. That's DJ Durkin, their defensive coordinator. 
And that is some fantastic defense. Oh, Pools played himself a phenomenal game here tonight. DJ Durkin's defense. They are fired up and getting results. Fourth down and denied. Turnover on downs. Anatomy of a big stop test. You're going to watch. You're going to have motion here. I was wrong. They did stay in man. Safety's going to kick back. This safety's going to kick up. Then what they do is they take the linebacker and walk him up, which puts the onus on this backside backer. That's Jared Davis. He's got a long way to come to make a play. And guess what? He does it. He beats the block and gets over there. Poole comes in, and that is a big-time play by Poole, 24, and Davis, 40. There's Poole. He's got a game-leading eight tackles. And here's that Florida offense with Kelvin Taylor, a game of two. I think all week about Florida and the injuries to the offensive line. A flag is down. We will check on that. And then finding out that Skylar Morningweg would be starting at quarterback. And how would they approach things with a guy who's never taken a snap in a game before? Well, it's been outstanding coaching by Brent Pease and Will Muschamp. You said it right, Tess. That's, this is as good a game plan. What you have, letting what it has work for you. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number 97. 15 yards added to the end of the run. Automatic first down. JT Surratt, those are the little things that you just can't do. Not when you're in spots like this. On a night when a lot of things aren't necessarily breaking your way. And HBC has that look on his face. South Carolina fans. Clock counting down here in the fourth quarter. Evan Taylor stacked up that time at about the 37 yard line. Personal foul from JT Surratt moments ago. Right there. And that's what got him. What got him was the swing afterwards. There was a there was a hit by Max Garcia, 76. Surratt. He countered it, and it's usually the counter that gets caught, and it was. Starting defensive tackle. Lines up next to Kelsey Quarles. And Kelsey Moore, Gerald Dixon in there. And here goes Morningweg again, splitting out for the direct snap to Taylor. They've had success with this tonight. That green line you see is the field goal range line. Tess, I want to show you something, and this is... It, you, you have this or you don't have it. Watch Jadavian Clowney on the top side, okay? This is just pure speed and get off. Now watch him not quit on it. And runs all the way through, makes a tackle on the other side. And that guy, he has got some phenomenal ski, uh, skills. And he's doing that on a sore wheel. Remember, he went out of this game as they were tending to his right ankle in the first half. They taped him up, put the shoe back on and sent him out to do damage. And what will he do here on third and five? And flag comes in as they were running that end around and in that counter with Taylor. Before the snap, false start. Offense, number 77. Five drive penalty, still third down. And that'll push them back even further. Out to the 41-yard line. As they were cresting on field goal range there for Austin Harden. And instead it'll back him up to a third and long. Third down and 11. Trey Burton. Morningwood's got the helmet off. Trey Burton, the senior 6'2", 225 pounder, is in the game at quarterback. He's played slot receiver this year, but he's played Wildcat quarterback throughout his career. And he will run it straight up the middle. But he only makes it to the 37-yard line as he was tackled by Sky Moore. So it'll be fourth down from the 37 is Will Muschamp. They've been playing conservative all night long. All they're doing their test is they're trying to take the receivers, spread everybody out, and run back up inside. And, and it has, hasn't really worked very much at all. Johnny Townsend, the punter, trotting out. With the ball on the 37-yard line, Florida's going to punt. 
and hope their defense can keep doing what they've been doing. As Townsend tries to position this, and a fair catch at the 10 by Victor Hampton. We got a tight one under the lights in the SEC. Must champ. Playing for pride, trying to grab a win. Head ball coach looking for an SEC title game. The number 10 team in the country has been battling uphill against Florida all night long. One point game here in the fourth quarter. Ball start. Offense, number 89. Five yard penalty. Still first down. Let's go down to the field to Maria. Guys, I've been keeping an eye on South Carolina's running back, Mike Davis. He's nursing a right ankle sprain, and he's been grimacing when he gets up off the bench. Everyone else runs into the offensive huddle. He's a little bit slower to get up and get going right now. He's not the same. But he's one of those guys who's got a high pain tolerance, and if it's bothering him, it must be hurt. 60 yards below his average. Right now, just 57 yards for Mike Davis. And here's a strong run right up the middle by Sean Carson. And look at the burst by Carson. Just what they needed. Cody Riggs finally tracked him down as Carson just exploded for 58 yards. The reason why? They blitzed. They blitzed a poor job up front by the linebackers taking things on. They bring the corner off the side and they move the safety out. And when they do that, the middle of the field's wide open. What I want you to see is this great hustle right there, coming right there. That was Jalen Watkins took got a great angle and ran him down. That's the longest run allowed by Florida this year. And this time he was met, tried to spin free, and got maybe a half yard beyond the line of scrimmage as Dante Fowler was the first to arrive. At him. Tess, when you blitz like that and you know you're going to vacate the middle of your scheme, you as a linebacker have to understand where you're at and so you have to really you have to build a wall inside which means you have to take on the block square and then you have to get off them they the backers didn't that time and he got up inside and he went for 58. Let's see if they can work into the range of the freshman kicker elliot fry second and nine shaw gonna go downfield and once again, it drifted on him beyond Shaq Rowland. Yeah, well, he had Rowland coming, but there was a, a, a corner on top and a backer underneath. And because that backer flashed underneath him, that ball took off on him. Had the backer not been there, he had a chance. See right there. Backers under. Oh, that's Watkins. Yeah, Jalen Watkins in front and Vernon yep. Hargraves bracketing there behind Shaq Rowland's third down and nine. Shaw looks over. 4 12 on the night on third down conversions. All by herself. Oh, now the safety start to move out a little bit. Shaw over the middle looking for his tight end. And somehow coming up with it is Busta Anderson. We will check on a flag. He's at the 10 yard line. The ball had coverage on Anderson, and what an athletic effort. He was all, the coverage was all over. But Anderson just did a phenomenal job. Defense, number 11. Crimson for two. We jumped up the play at the first down. There was P.I. on ball, but an amazing catch by Rory Busta Anderson. Six foot five. Tight end, and he went up for it. Yeah, watch the concentration. He just stays with it and fights it all the way through. Though that's fantastic. And then Shaw does a nice job, knowing that he's going to get pressure and get a hit. Cummings gets the hit, but Shaw put it right where it had to be. Mike Davis in the eye formation here, goal line package. One receiver split up. 
22 personnel here on the goal line. And he was met in the backfield. This floor to front has done a good job. Leon Orr with the tackle of Mike Davis. The Gators have really, when the Gators have gotten into some trouble, Des, is when, is when they've, when they've moved their people, when they play base defense, they've played pretty tough. The offensive line right now giving Shaw time to throw from the pocket. Second goal now with Shaw out of the shotgun. going to sprint and look and then just have to get rid of it so it'll be third and goal as he was chased down by Michael Taylor that was a great job of with Michael Taylor knowing exactly what he had to do they they brought a blitz they went man to man outside Taylor was from the inside and was not going to let him get the edge they just did a fantastic job of taking that away from him Aaron Kitchens also did a nice job, number 49. He forced that thing wide, sets up this third and goal. We go trips to the top with Sean Carson flanking Connor Shaw in the gun on third and goal. Timeout. And they will use a timeout. timeout. Steve Spurrier will take his first timeout. Auburn and Georgia and Alabama not pulling away from Mississippi State quite yet. And number 10 against this Florida team that's lost four straight. Can they hold here down at the goal line? If they go play action, Anderson's the guy. Third and goal for South Carolina. To the end zone they go. And they're saying that is incomplete as Shaq Rowland couldn't pull it in. As he was battling with Purifoy there. Purifoy. Purifoy may have gotten away with a hold right there. Looked like he was up around that. Shoulder of Shaq Rowland. I don't know if he held, if he, let's see, let's see, has control, foot is in, that's six, Tess. Let's see what he does with the ball all the way through. That's six points. Wow. I mean, you had to take a couple looks before you could see what an effort that was. Remember, you have to have firm control of the ball, and you see Steve Spurrier pointing up there at the Jumbotron as Elliott Fry. He on the field was an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Elliott Fry was lined up to kick, and his head coach was saying, now hold on a second. I want you guys to take a peek at this. But there's pieces that have to happen. One is control. Their control. There's a foot in. Does he have control all the way through? Whoa, that's, kind of, that's right in between. It looks, let's see. Catch. Not He's got to have control. No, not yet. There's the foot down. Now he has control, and the foot is still down. He brings it in. I would say that's six. It's going to be real close, but I will say this. Remember that the ruling on the field was an incomplete pass, and that first moment of separating the left hand ball and right hand is right what hand. the official first sees. Then he controls it right there. there. And the foot is still down. That's but six. then he lifts the foot, so they're going to have to ask themselves, is that indisputable video evidence that yes. allows them to reverse the call on the field? Yeah, that, the answer, I think, is yes. So that goes to Ben Oldham, who we visited with before, and he quickly gets the answer to Hubert Owens. They need the indisputable video evidence. Keep in mind. After review, the ruling on the field stands. He's an incomplete pass. Ooh. And that means that there was not the video evidence to reverse the call. Now, the play stands is different than the plays confirmed. What they're saying is, hey, we can't confirm that the call is correct. Can't prove the call is wrong, so the play on the field stands, and it draws that kind of reaction from those here at williams Bryce. Yeah, they're throwing, <laughs> they're throwing stuff down on the field. They're not real thrilled. I, Tess, I got to tell you, I... I agree with the fans in this one. I think that was six. But hey, I'm just some slappy up here calling a game. <laughs> well, bottom line is Elliot Fry is going to give South Carolina an opportunity here to take the lead. And the young man does just that. 22-yard field goal, his third of the night. And South Carolina takes a 16-14 lead. Those here in Columbia thought it would be seven. Instead, it's three. 
bottom line is they've got it back out in front against the Gators. Get that pause down. You're Do whatever you SEC need. To on ESPN. And when you're watching the SEC on ESPN, folks, you're watching great entertainment. And we'll have that again tomorrow morning with Sunday NFL Countdown at 10 a.m. And then Fantasy Football Now at 11 a.m. on ESPN2. Did I get the pause right? The pause was beautiful. Thank you, my friend. You phrase like Sinatra. <laughs> uh, we got a good one here in the fourth quarter at williams Bryce Stadium as South Carolina just took the lead on an Elliott Fry field goal. Florida has played them tough. Florida has lost four straight. They've been dealing with all the injuries on both sides of the ball. Seven starters out for the year. They're down to morning wig at quarterback, but they've managed through it. Inspired defense, conservative offense, and now they've got to respond as this kick will draw a penalty flag. Wow. I'll check in with Wendy Nix in the studio. Joe Tess, thank you. We check in on Alabama on the road at Mississippi State. Now, watch this play. Tyler Russell here, the keeper for nine yards, but the ball comes loose, the fumble, and then the big man, Charles Sidaway, falls on the ball in the end zone, and it's touchdown Mississippi State. It would be 10-7 to Alabama at that point, but the tide has answered. A.J. McCarron to one of his favorite targets, Kevin Norwood in the end zone. Extra point is good. It's 17-7 now, under six minutes to play in the third quarter on ESPN. So Alabama muddling along in Starkville. And we'll see what this Florida offense can do here. And as Matt Brown takes it up the middle for three yards. Let's look at the BCS standings brought to you by Vizio. Told you about Alabama and Mississippi State. Stanford trailing USC. Baylor started a little slow, but now they have exploded against Texas Tech and Auburn and Georgia. That was the thriller this afternoon and a game and a result with great impact on this one because South Carolina, they wanted to see Auburn defeat Georgia. So they can be in position to try to work their way into a tiebreaker with Mizzou and win the SEC East. Morningwig now gets it complete. We haven't seen Morningwig throw it over the middle much tonight. But he has been perfect when he has tossed it. Now it's been all in the quick game, but he's 6 for 6 for 46 yards. That's fine. And this is... Brent Pease is going to have to rely on his young freshman redshirt. Coming up on five and a half minutes and a third and four. At some point, they got to turn the morning wave. Well, there's showers now at the back in the pistol formation. And now they go empty. And they go with the screen. Burton. The flag is down as Burton is a yard short of the first down line. Sherrod go lightly with the tackle. Holding offense number 76. 10 yard going from the previous spot. Still third down. Max Garcia, who's going against Jadavian Clowney. So sometimes you can block them, and sometimes you can't quite block them. So what you do is you just tackle them. Right? Just grab them by the leg and bring them down to the ground. Keep your eye on Clowney on this one. Third and 13. Play clocks down to two. And it's incomplete as he was looking for Quentin Dunbar and Jimmy Legree broke it up. One thing I'll tell you though, Skyler Morningwig, while they haven't asked him to do a lot, he's been accurate with the ball. And that was his first incompletion of the night. Of course, they've been limited with what they've asked of him just six of seven for 47 yards and he's thrown into a tough spot the young kid from philly st joe's prep and look at this formation now out of florida 
Will they shift back into it? No. Fourth and 13. They're going to roll the dice. And it's incomplete. But they gave it a go, didn't they? That was Trey Burton. As they tried to fake the punt. And he went downfield. And I think that was, was that Leon Orr? It was Leon, Leon Orr. Leon Orr, the defensive lineman, was downfield. He had him, too. He was open. Listen, you've lost four straight. You're not getting much out of your passing game. Was this worth a shot? He was the center on it. And he's eligible. Be oh, well, boy. Well, he's the end man on the line. Exactly right. See, with that formation, Orr is the end man on the near side of the line, making him an eligible receiver. So he snaps it and then goes out in a pass pattern. And it would have been there. But instead, it's a turnover on downs. And the 32-yard line is where South Carolina takes over the ball and looks to seal the deal here. And once again, great pressure and pursuit by Florida's defense. Yeah, this defense has played well all night. Watkins has played a heck of a game. Fowler's done a nice job. We had Brian Poole. There's a bunch of guys that Orr knows that was a wasted opportunity. The ball was there to be caught. He couldn't come down with it. 6'5", 300 pounds, and athletically downfield, but couldn't hold on to that. Fourth down throw by Burton. Second and 12 now. And as the clock is going to go under four minutes. See Riggs has dropped down. They're giving him an eight-man front. Single high. Looks like man coverage. Person. And he drives ahead for an extra few yards that time with Bullard on top of him. Sets up a third down. So DJ Dirk and the defensive coordinator is rolling the dice a little bit here. He's taking some chances, much like they just did on fourth down. They've got to stop him here and try to force a long field goal. Florida switching out with defensive substitutions as South Carolina will use that clock. Two-point lead. Been a tight one all night long. They've got him on the edge. They've had success getting Shaw out of the edge and a call. Third and seven. They run the ball straight up the middle with Sean Carson. So it'll be fourth down from the 26-yard line. That's a 41 or 42-yarder. Or they're going to stay on. Kelly Fry, the young kicker. That's three on the night. They'll probably take this clock it, down yeah, and use a timeout here before Spurrier sends out Fry. Be about a 42-yard field goal from there, depending on the spot here. 16 straight home wins is what the goal is. And Florida timeout. Trying to South avoid Carolina. losing five it's straight. It hasn't happened since 1979. A reminder that the NASCAR season comes down to one race. Ford Echo Boost 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage starts Sunday at 1 Eastern on ESPN. You know, Matt, there was a lot of talk about Florida and how they would react this week and the job security of Will Muschamp. He got the endorsement from the AD and the president. This team came to play tonight. They were spirited. He never lost the team throughout what's been happening. And they've the been month. patient, Tess. They've been very patient with their run game. They've been patient defensively and how they've been calling. With them. I think they played a fantastic game here tonight. But as good a game as they have played, South Carolina has been just as patient. And they've stayed with what they've needed to do. And so they're, they've been taking the points that present themselves at the time. And now they're going to try to hit, put a, another three points up here to try to extend it to four to force a touchdown to beat them. I think it's both sides have been very well coached. Young man, Elliot Fry, who turned down a scholarship from Louisiana Tech to walk on here at South Carolina, looking for his fourth field goal of the night. Great technique. 
and a great result. Elliot Fry brings the margin now to five. Lost in all that. That was a nice job of the Florida defense to hold it to three after they took a chance. As they've done many times tonight. Exactly. And so now it falls back to the Florida offense and the South Carolina defense. And at one point here, Brent Pease is going to have to open his little bag of tricks. Every offensive coordinator test holds back something. They hold back something because they know in case they need it, well, now is the time where they're going to need it. Boy, Auburn really did South Carolina a favor by handing Georgia their third conference loss. Now, Missouri controls things, but Missouri still has Ole Miss and Texas A&M to come. So if Missouri drops one of those last two, if South Carolina finishes up their SEC season tonight, this is their final SEC game with a win, well, then all it's going to take is Mizzou to lose one of those two because of that tiebreaker, that double overtime thriller a few weeks ago that South Carolina pulled off from down 17 on the road at Mizzou. Missouri's been one of the great stories of the season. The folks here at Carolina are still dreaming big. They want to make it to that SEC title game. And they have come back here in the second half against Florida. And this takes a bounce down near the goal line. Solomon Patton on the return. And ran into his own man, so Florida will start at the 26-yard line. Now, it's a critical time of the game. It's a little over two minutes to go. You've got to keep your head. You can't make any mistakes. No penalties. And for young Skyler Morningweg, it's time to make a couple plays. Sure, he had many chats with his dad, Marty, former NFL head coach, offensive coordinator of the Jets. And there's his mom and his family looking on. And now the moment has arrived for young Skyler. First down pass. Oh, and that should have been caught by Fullwood. He may have taken a little hit there in the contact at the end of the play. And as it was Bryson Williams charging in hard there, running in, but Morningwood laid it out there. Oh, that ball should have been caught. It's right where it had to be. We saw it. Body of Williams coming in and catching the side of the head. He has, he has, yeah, he has it right there, and then Williams just runs right through the ball. Easy to understand why Fullwood is slow to get up and being tended to there, as you saw his head kind of twisted to the side with a 218 pound strong safety coming in at the end of that play. Both these secondaries, we've talked about Florida's, but South Carolina's as well. They have tackled very, very well. It's been a fun game to watch in terms of good defensive hitting. So they'll be without the six foot five true freshman as Fullwood goes over to the sideline. And JD Clowney, well, he drools over moments like this. Obvious passing situations. Here's the screen to Taylor. Blockers in front. Taylor on the go. And it's going to be a first down for Florida. As JT Surratt got to him, Jonathan Harrison lost his helmet at the end of the play, and that's critical because he's the center. That's, that's who deal. Skyler Morningweg relies on. The only offensive lineman to be there all year. One of only five players on the entire Florida team who have made it through the year healthy and starting every game so far. So they're without Harrison for this play. First down, Morningweg. And he gets it complete. Maybe a little confidence boost now as he finds Trey Burton. A minute 45 to go. Tess, this is what I thought they should have been doing a little bit earlier. But hey, now it's here, and now the pressure's on, and he's responding. They wanted to protect him and manage the play calling and arrive at a point where maybe it's on the line. Well, it is now. Second and five. I like the look in his eye, though. That's a good look. Got a little confidence going. Coach's son. Will it be a dream scenario?
It's a complete, and it'll be another first down as he finds Quinton Dunbar. And with every throw and every completion, he gains more and more confidence. And so does the play caller in him. And so Brent Pease is sitting up there going, okay, hey, he's got a little bit here. Injured Tyler Murphy looks on. Rooting on his understudy, Skyler Morningway. Trying to extend the play now, being chased down. Be smart. That wasn't smart. Jimmy Legree, interception, Carolina. You could see it from here, Tess. Jimmy Legree does a fantastic job. But Skyler Morningwig knew better. He should have thrown it away. He got greedy. And Legree turned into Simon Legree and gets himself a pick. Interception with a minute 22 to play. The first turnover of the game. Good coverage all the way around. He knows he has to bail. Eyes are down. He does this well. When the coverage is sitting there, he knows he's got to throw that into the sideline. Don't try to get greedy. Legree undercuts him right here. He knew it when he threw it. And now South Carolina with Sean Carson getting a little more work here. As Mike Davis was banged up a bit earlier, he's in spot duty. Florida. Florida will use a timeout. So time it's a, a good game here. For the fighting Sterling Sharks. <laughs> They've been... DJ uh... Durkin, Osha. Good game defensively for Florida tonight, but South Carolina looks like they're going to stay the course, and this will wrap up their SEC schedule. And they got Coastal Carolina and then the rivalry game against Clemson on November 30th. Always one of the great moments of the college football season, especially when both programs have been the way they are in recent years. As Jadavian Clowney, well, he got hurt earlier, came back in, played a major role in the second half. Uh, he's, he's everything they say he is. He's got phenomenal skills. And I've put the tape on and watched him against uh, Tennessee, Des, and we've talked about it. But he, does, he does some things naturally that... You either have or you don't have it. He's got it in full. Let's <laughs> keep the clock going here. Florida just with that one. Timeout. Timeout left. Florida. We've got more football coming your way tonight. It's third and final time out of the half. It's been a great day of college football. Great day in the SEC. The thriller with Auburn and Georgia. This close one here in Carolina. And Brock Hewitt's going to be coming up with Boise and Wyoming. You know, they were there at walkthrough on the blue turf yesterday up there in Boise. Brock Hewitt, former Washington quarterback, with his producer Jimmy Zaroli. Oh, this is the Jimmy. game coming up next. Look at Zaroli nice. running past Zeroli. patterns oh, here. Beautiful. On That's... the blue turf, but what, what, what happened oh, there? No. Nice. What? That is, you know, that's the what? case. That's, that's what the blue turf can do to you. You go on the road, you play in the blue turf, and even the producer can go down playing on the blue turf. You know what else that means? That means you got a non-athlete out there on no, the blue turf. I would turf. never say that about I would. see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that game's coming up. Wyoming and Boise State. Right after we finish things up, Mark Jones and Brock Heward will have the call. John Carson's going over 100 yards tonight as he is Carolina's leading rusher. Florida is out of timeouts, fourth down. And defense played the head ball coach's offense awfully well. They were limited offensively. Morning went through that interception on that last drive. 
Mm -hmm. Stuff Gators not being treated so well, is he? <laughs> They're going to let this clock run down here. Time out, South Carolina. It's their third and final time out of the half. It's a good 30 second timeout. Keep in mind how critical this was for South Carolina. Earlier tonight, when Auburn pulled off that miracle with Ricardo Lewis. And Georgia went down. It created unique scenarios for South Carolina because they needed Georgia out of the mix. And they need Missouri to lose one of the next two games at Ole Miss and Texas A&M. I mean, that's not easy for Mizzou. Mizzou is a talented team. Yes, well are. coached, great receivers, good defensive ends. But that's not going to be easy. And South Carolina is going to park that SEC record in the clubhouse. Unless something miraculous happens here in the last 26 seconds for the Gators. Gary Pinkle with a really nice coaching job. There's some good coaching job. How about how about uh, David Cutcliffe up at Duke? Tremendous. How about Adazio up at Boston College? Those two and programs in the ACC. Rusher. They came after it, but they're able to get it away. And it takes a great South Carolina bounce all the way down to the one-yard line. With 12 seconds remaining, Tyler Hall just pins that punt. That was perfect special teams. And South Carolina's 12 seconds away from the all-time home winning streak record here. So you got 12 seconds, and you got, no, you only got 99 yards to go. Quarterback who passed for 73 yards on the entire night. Connor Shaw. Record breaker for Shaw as well if they hold on. He's never lost at home. As they will just pitch it around here, Trey Burton. That was, and Burton is taken down. That was not smart. Zero's got, on the clock. She got out of bounds. And for Connor Shaw, 24th win in school history. Florida has lost five straight. Last time you can say that was 79. South Carolina's won 16 straight home games. 1914's the final. Stay tuned for ESPN College Football Finale. It'll be Wyoming and Boise State. For Matt and Maria, I'm Joe Tessitore. Enjoy the rest of your night.